Hello, welcome to Soul Print Intuitive Tarot for May the 12th. So, Mike Pence is going to work, um, I guess, from home. He's working in isolation. Um, so the COVID thing is has really sort of um, started to permeate the White House. And definitely, you're going to see uh, more agitation, more concern, more worry, more and more people pulling back. So um, that's going to be interesting to not only watch, but it, most importantly, to watch Trump's reaction to it. Because, you know, it's all fine and well until it happens in your own backyard. And he is such a germaphobe um, that this must just be making him just a little bit crazy. So, uh, yeah, so that's interesting. But what I really want to focus on today is uh, Mr. George and Kellyanne Conway. So, quite the interesting couple they are. And um, if you go through my playlist, you will see that I have I've read on them a couple of times. And one of the things that always came out was the fact that despite what is witnessed in public, um, they really are more on the same page than people realize. And I have to tell you, the book that they're reading comes from George's library, not Kellyanne's. So um, I want to take another look at them in view of the fact that the Lincoln Project is up and running and um, receiving a lot of donations for those amazing commercials they're doing. And... Um, Sometimes late last week, um, when Trump went like bat poop about um, the one, one of the ones that was released, he started making a very, very snarky comment about um, how Kellyanne must really have George. And then he stopped talking. Or I'm paraphrasing, but you get the idea. Um, and then he backed right away from that. He just pulled right back. So... Um, I guess he figured even he, in odd moments, is perhaps capable of understanding when he's gone a bridge too far. So I want to take a look at them and kind of see what's going on there and what's the story there. So come on down. I have a question. Okay, so let us take a look at George and Kellyanne Conway and see what insights or information um, would the uh, spirit would like to share with us. So here we go. Um, George and Kellyanne Conway, George and Kellyanne Conway, George and Kellyanne Conway. Hmm. So, in some ways, it very much feels as if, and again, it's that same energy that I consistently pick up with them, there is not friction and anger that goes on in their house between the two of them with regards to what they each do for a living. The difference is George is able to verbalize it. Kellyanne's role is to promote what it is that Trump says. But within the privacy of their home, they're not scraping back and forth about you said this, you shouldn't say that, you know, be nicer to my boss. How can you work for a jerk? There is none of that going on. Um, and in some kind of crazy way, their interests are very, very much the same, which is to try to um, prevent the whole political system from collapsing in on itself 
because of the behavior. So Kellyanne very much would then fall into the category of one of those people who believe, rightly or wrongly, but who believe that they need to stay there because um, if they're in the inner circle, they have a better chance of um, kind of trying to keep some of the crazy in check. Now, it does not appear that that is actually something um, that is going to get any easier, okay, because things are starting to really, really spiral out of control, literally within the institution of the government um, because of Trump's behavior. But there, re And there really is a sense already in the White House, within the administration, uh, shared by most, not all of them, but most, that they really wish already he would sit down and shut up because he is making it so much more difficult, frankly, to get anything done and to um, keep any conversation going on one track long enough to make any sort of an impact, right? I mean, that's part of Trump's game, right? It's like, let's just throw a bunch of stuff in the air and get everybody all confused. Um, but, you know, there are times when it's really helpful if you can stay on message and stay on track. And that he doesn't seem to be able to do. And frankly, he's not going to be able to do it yet for the next little while. So um, there is that sense that they are doing what she, I'll stick with her. She is doing what she can. Now, make no mistake, she is one of the primary leakers. When um, there's quotes that say from a um, high placed government official, you can bet your bottom dollar that she is part of that or she is one of them. So, part of what she does is she just works at feeding information out. And um, trying to keep um, some of the stuff that's that going on behind the scenes that they want kept behind the scenes, um, trying to keep that from being hidden, actually. And I'm not painting wings on her, okay? I'm really not. Nor am I painting wings on George. They are Republicans. And they are conservative Republicans. And so... Um, a lot of things that independents and Democrats really, really have a problem with, um, they support, okay? And so you have to understand, they, they're cut from a different cloth. But part of what is going on is there really, really seems to be a significant worry about whether the government can actually sustain the continual... Um, shots right that it that it's taking right the continual slams into those guardrails so they just have kind of different ways of um doing it her way is putting information out there spinning it so she says one she says one thing in public and she says something else when she's talking privately to reporters or other people about him, okay? But for whatever reason, Trump has not quite seen to um he hasn't figured it out. Like he, it's weird. I would even go so far as to say that in some ways um this is not a decision that she has um, independently arrived at to sort of stay in there. I actually honestly get the feeling that there are other high-ranking Republicans um, or even perhaps Republican donors who have sort of encouraged her to stay put. Because she is one of those people, unlike the Jareds and the Stephen Kings of the world, who can actually let others know with some clarity what the heck is going on behind the scenes. So there's actually um, 
monitoring going on from a whole bunch of different places. Now, I'm not going to say that she's a spy, um, you know, within the administration, but I am definitely getting the energy and the feeling that she is being told to stay put, hold strong, because they need some real clarity on what's going on. You've got to understand, there is a big difference between... Um, Trump's inner circle and actual Republicans. And for reasons that are frankly beyond the grasp of most of us, they're all scared of him and they don't want to rock that boat. And oh, let's face it, in part because the Republicans are getting a whole lot of stuff done that they considered really important. So there's that. But there's still Republicans in place, a lot behind the scenes, who really feel that this guy needs to be monitored. And frankly, the more erratic he becomes, the more concerned they can't become, uh, uh, you know, exactly how many people are actually paying attention to him that are not, um, where, you know, they're not part of that inner circle. They're not um, all of his sort of business acquaintances that he's trying to, you know, make rich overnight or frankly has made richer or richer overnight. Um, there seems to be... A couple of people within the administration whose purpose on um, on the surface is one thing and whose purpose behind the scenes appears to be quite another. And that is the category that I would put her in. Now, I've never quite gotten that quite with so much clarity, but it's a very, very strong impression that I'm getting. It's almost as if... Um, she does what she does during the day at the White House, and, and it's I can literally see her sitting on the phone in the evenings and talking to people that she doesn't dare talk to when she's in the White House. So that is very interesting. Now, the other side of the spectrum is George. George is doing everything he can with that group of never Republican Republicans or never Trump Republicans, sorry, um, who is doing what they feel they need to do um, to embarrass and to humiliate and to call out for complete gross criminal negligence. Because they, of course, understand how unbelievably fragile Trump's ego is. So he falls into that category. And for those of you who are, um, you know, kind of concerned that, you know, well, I don't like the, the Lincoln Project because they're Republicans and therefore you can't trust any of them. Try to remember that there really is a very big difference between never Trump Republicans and Republicans who are really super busy lining their pockets right now because the writing is on the wall and they know that they're not going to have this buffoon in place for forever. And so they're trying to get while the getting's good. So the thing about the Lincoln Project is, is that they have a very um, clear eyed agenda. And the agenda is to get him gone because they too really do see him kind of as, as the devil running amok with, frankly, what is considered a sacred institution. It is your government. It is your, you know, constitution. It is your bill of rights. And then you've got this fool bouncing around all over the place, just mucking up everything because that's all he really actually knows how to do. Um, and they understand, and probably because Kellyanne and perhaps a few others um, have really, over the last years, have really, really been able to get um, kind of some real clarity on um, the psychology, if you will, of Trump. And so they have a great deal of clarity, behind the scenes clarity, of exactly what it is that uh, really triggers him. and. I really have to feel that they are getting fed that information from other people or other sources. And so they kind of exactly know where to hit, right? And that is part of the reason that these commercials have so, so effectively 
um, made him a little bit crazy because they seem to be hitting um, at exactly the different soft spots that are in his ego. And they're going to continue to do it. And, and like, this is the thing, right? It is what? It is the middle of May. And by and large, typically, um, certainly it's not quite the same this year because of all of the insanity, but typically, the average American really doesn't start to pay attention to the upcoming election until after Labor Day. So you have May, June, July, August, September, four months, three and a half months, four months, that they're going to be out there putting out these commercials and just getting him wound up to a place where they're sort of actually um, pushing him, if you will, down the path of exit because they're going to keep on coming after him. And I've said this before, and it bears repeating. The Lincoln Project is able to attract or sorry, able to attack Trump in a way that does sort of the dirty work, if you will, for the Democrats. So then the Democrats are able to, um, you know, go high, right? Take the high road. Because there's a lot of people, frankly, who... I mean, okay, so there's people who really want the Democrats to just punch back the way Trump punches. There's a whole other majority of people who are so sick of the stupidity, of the the violence, of the nastiness, the bullying, um, the aggression, the insulting behavior. They don't want to see it from anybody else. They don't want to see it from the people who are trying to win their um, vote. They don't want to see it. They're done. They put up with this for three and a half years, and they don't want to see that kind of behavior from the next occupants of the White House. Well, you know, this is the thing, right? If they don't want to see it and you behave that way, you are actually turning off the very people that you want to vote for, for you. So in really, this... the. the the, the Lincoln Project and the Democratic Party have actually made a perfect union because they each get to follow on their track, but they're able basically to accomplish um, two very, very different things, both of which are going to weaken Trump going forward. OK, so, you know, keep that in mind. Joe Biden, this is, as you know, this is my car for Joe. Um, he also, he has the ability, just because he's smart and a little bit better, be well, a lot better behaved, um, is he has the ability to say things that are not a front on attack, which is the way Trump speaks, but he still manages to kind of get Trump's uh, goat, okay? So he is able to sort of push, push, and then it's almost as if the Lincoln Project is able to um, create the momentum from that push and, and sort of slam them against the wall. So, as I said, I don't, I mean, the Never Trumpers are still Republicans, okay? But at this point, the Never Trumpers and the Democrats have the same agenda. All of those Never, never Trump or Republicans are all voting and they're publicly saying they're going to vote for Democrats this election. And I'm not positive, but I do believe that that includes Democrats down ballot. I don't know to what extent or to what degree, but again, they have watched sort of a bastardization of their party under the rule of McConnell. And those who still hope to have a future in politics, with great clarity, understand the damage that is being done to the party. And if they have hopes of somehow um, restoring the party or, you know, finding a, a strong position in the party going forward, they recognize that some of these really bad actors have got to be removed. So... 
as I said, it very much feels like kind of a lovely little union because they both have exactly the same agenda, which is to get him out. They understand that he thinks he's a king. They understand that his ego is unbelievable. Not only is its ego incredibly fragile, but mentally there is significant, significant deterioration. And so they know that the more Trump is put in a position where he has to defend himself and justify his behavior, um, the more icy the ground gets under his feet. He's not really able to um, hold on to a narrative, hold on to a spin, because he just reacts out of, um, it's like the guy has no impulse control, like none, okay, like zero. And so... He's going to do whatever he's going to do because he's just going to react in the moment because he doesn't like something you said or did or whatever. And they understand that that behavior um, is going to be part of what sways even more Republicans to pull away from him because they're going to be able to witness him being unbelievably erratic. And they're also going to witness the um, Republicans in power, like McConnell, who are doing nothing to stop it. And, you know, people may want change. They might have voted in Trump because they wanted him to shake things up a little bit. But there's very, very few of them who wanted it destroyed. And it's becoming more and more apparent that his gross incompetence and his unbelievable lack of intelligence and comprehension are starting to destroy things. And again, don't forget, as the next months unfold, the Republic Republicans are going to be hit hard with this virus. And so that's going to, again, cause, you know, the numbers, the polls, that kind of thing to start tanking. And, of course, the more he feels he has to defend himself, the more erratic and sort of verbally, um, it's like buckshot. You know, is that what that's called, where you put it in a rifle and it shoots and it goes all in a hundred directions? That's kind of what we're going to be seeing from, from Trump in the next while. It's just completely scattered. Right. His everything he says and does is so scattered that there really is not a whole lot of understanding of why he does what he does. OK, so as far as George and Kellyanne, this card is actually kind of representative of it. Right. They are continually. Um, working in unison. They're constantly juggling to keep information flowing, to keep the rhythm going, so that the information that needs to come out is able to come out. And she, you know, like Kellyanne or not like Kellyanne, she is not a uneducated, silly woman, okay? And so she has a, a lot more understanding kind of of what's going on behind the scenes than, frankly, um, some of the others. Trump doesn't know what's going on. If Pence does know, he's too scared to say anything. Jared Kushler is beyond useless. Okay, beyond. He has not one... I'm not one iota of understanding about how a government should work and function within sort of normal government behaviors and patterns. And frankly, from what I can gather, it seems like everything that he's really, really recommended to Trump has sort of blown up in not only his face, but in Trump's face. So you got that going on. So she has this sense of ob objectivity and clarity that literally some of the people in his tightest circle do not have because they all are operating and functioning under this bizarre state of disillusionment, okay? They are, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid, believing in the fantasy, however you want to term, you know, term it. Um, and I don't mean for this to, I don't want this to sound or feel like I'm praising Kellyanne, I'm not. She's a snake in the grass, and if, um, she really did have any 
Um, a sort of sense of, of integrity and honesty. Um, she wouldn't do the things she does. She wouldn't say the things she does. She wouldn't jump at defending him. But again, the more you defend him, the closer you are to that inner circle. So frankly, the more information she can gather and release. And trust me, she is a significant source, not only to higher ups in the RNC or donors somewhere in there. I'm not going to name names because frankly, I'm not getting any clarity about who they may or may not be, but they're up there. Um, and like I said, she is newspaper reporters. She's like one of their bestest friends, okay? Um, and it very much feels like together, their goal is to bring him down. And I actually think that the combination of insider information getting released anonymously, um, George and the Lincoln Project um, hitting kind of exactly where Trump is most sensitive, and the Democrats being able to maintain a little bit of that, no, we're going high. We're not going to stoop to his level. We're not going to play his ridiculous games. We are not getting in the mud with Trump. It's all going to come together to really, really cause a crush. And what you're going to get from that is, this is actually representing for once in the, in the political readings, actually a really good turn of fortune, okay? Um, the wheel of fortune is going to start shining on those people who were basically moving forward with the same agenda, which of course is to bring the tower down on Trump. Um, and that, that then creates this situation of, frankly, um, hope and happiness and um, success for their projects and perhaps a new beginning for the United States and certainly a new beginning for the presidency. Okay, so um, that is my take on George and Kellyanne Conway. Um, perhaps you have found it insightful or interesting. I hope so. That's I think all I have to say about that. So until next time, take care. Be well, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.